Good morning. Welcome to Sulphur Christian Church. My name is Jeff Maggard. I'm the pastor of Sulphur Christian Church. And uh, welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. This fine, cool day in February, but hey, the sun's uh, out a little bit and uh, not a bad day. So welcome in. Welcome in to worship here at Sulphur Christian Church. We're so excited that you're joining us. Good morning. Welcome in, folks. We're so excited that you're here and with us, and uh, we're going to worship God together. Uh, I can't wait for us to get back together, weather permitting. Next Sunday, 11 a.m., we will have in-person church at Sulphur Christian Church, and then um, and then from there on out, we're trusting God for that. So, um, um We'll also continue to broadcast on Facebook Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock, Wednesday night with Pastor Jeff, and then Sunday morning worship at 11 a.m. on Facebook and in person on Sunday mornings as well. And we would love to see you there. If maybe you've been watching and you live fairly close by, at least a commuting distance, uh, we would love for you to uh, come join us on a Sunday morning. Let me tell you something. We're pretty casual there. Some folks dress up and put on their Sunday best, and some folks come in their jeans and, and uh, their comfy shirts and tennis shoes, and that's fine too. God wants you just the way you are. We'd love to have you come and uh, join us uh, at church in person uh, beginning next week. Again, weather permitting, hopefully, hopefully. Just a reminder, if you've not uh, let Jordan know what uh, you want uh, for Forget the Frock, please uh, let Jordan uh, know what size and what style uh, you want from, uh, from Forget the Frock. That's on our church Facebook page, and maybe uh, Jordan could repost that for folks to look at, but try to let her know today, before the end of the day, uh, what size and what design that you want uh, so that we can continue our tradition of wearing our Forget the Frock shirts on uh, Easter Sunday. And really, in a nutshell, what that is, is it's an organization that supports orphans and uh, some of the money that uh, goes to your t-shirt also goes to helping orphans in the world, awareness, and medical care, food, education, and the gospel. So uh, please uh, support that. Even if you live far, far away, you can still get on Forget the Frock's website and order one of those t-shirts for yourself and find out more information about Forget the Frock. So uh, please add that to your to-do list today. Uh, get that information to Jordan so we can all look spiffy uh, in our t-shirts on Easter Sunday instead of our super duper expensive new Easter clothes. Uh, so anyway, uh, it's a good cause and uh, I love, they're some of my favorite shirts. I have like five or six of those shirts now and I love them. I wear them all the time. So, uh, so please uh, join us in that, uh, supporting that ministry. All right, well, I'm gonna open this quickly in prayer, and then we're going to sing a couple of songs together. And uh, if you would, if you have communion elements uh, available, uh, whether you have a juice and a cracker or anything you have available nearby, a uh, cheese it and Kool-Aid, hey, that's fine. Uh, to represent the body and the blood of Christ, here in a few minutes we're going to have time for communion. Uh, so I'm going to open us in prayer uh, lots of prayer concerns, of course, this time of year. Uh, still, although the numbers are declining, COVID and things like that, uh, people in Texas and other places where there's still a lot of places without running water and electricity, heck, they're learning a lesson about what a third of the world lives like every day. So uh, we need to keep that in our prayers. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thank you for bringing us together once again in worship. Lord Jesus, even though we're apart, Lord, unite our voices. Unite us in prayer, in spirit, in worship, in thanksgiving. Lord Jesus, even though we're miles and miles apart, some of us, 
Father God, Lord Jesus, through your Holy Spirit, abide with us and draw us together. Lord Jesus, as we thank you and we praise you and we worship you, you're so good and so amazing. Father God, be with everybody on our prayer list, and there's lots and lots of them. Lord Jesus, we just, let's lift up everybody who has health issues, Father God, in and around our church, relatives. Lord Jesus, uh, we pray for folks who are suffering from uh, the grief of loss of a loved one, Lord Jesus. We lift those up. Father, we lift up so many, many, many people affected by this weather we've had in the last couple of weeks. And Lord Jesus, Father God, we just pray for a thaw and for help. And Lord Jesus, just uh, help them to it, that, that the heat would come back on, the water would start running again. And Father God, people would be safe again. And Father God, help brother help brother and sister help si sister and people help people. And Father God, Lord Jesus, to just help us to show what we can do for our neighbors and for our loved ones. Father God, we just love you so much. And we, we just thank you for this day. In your precious, holy, mighty, amazing, incredible name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly came to the earth you created, all full of saints. Help us 
us as we join in communion to remember that you came to earth. You felt what we feel. You've experienced what we've experienced. And Father God, still with all that, you could have ran back home. But you stayed. You allowed yourself to be arrested, beaten, and crucified. So Father God, as we take our juice or our drink, our food, or bite of bread or cracker, we're reminded that it's your blood that was shed for us for the forgiveness of our sins and that your body was broken for us, Lord Jesus, so that we could live the lives that we live without fear of death and knowing that, Father God, over our lifetimes, you're going to build us into something beautiful. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, oh this is my song. This is my Savior, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. 
This is my story And this is my song Praising my Savior All the day long Praising our Savior all the day long Amen. This is my story. This is my song. So today we're going to talk um, a little bit as we began Lent. This is the first Sunday in Lent. Time of preparation to get ready for Easter. And yes, even though maybe we've lived many, many Easter's, each Easter and each Lenten season gives us the opportunity as believers to grow deeper and go deeper in our faith and learn more about this incredible relationship that Jesus offers us. So today we're going to start out we're going to start out in 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4, if you have your Bibles with you. If you don't, grab a pencil and a piece of paper and jot these scriptures down because we're going to talk, uh, talk about them uh, very, very likely over the next couple of weeks. So 2 Corinthians 4, 16. And it says, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inner, inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Therefore, do not lose heart, though outwardly you may be wasting away, inwardly we are being made new every day, day by day. So remember that, add that and think about that to your notes. Next, we're going to flip over to 1 Peter 5, 1 Peter 5, verse 10. 1 Peter 5, chapter 5, verse 10. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, he himself will restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. You catch that? Folks outside the church think for some reason when we talk about God that we think life is perfect and maybe we give off that vibe sometimes too. But truly, after we have suffered a little while, God will renew us. He'll make us stronger and steadfast and firm in our faith. But we have to make sure that the foundation of our strength, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, in our Becoming series, we have to make sure that our strength comes from the Lord, that we, we base our strengths not on anything that we can do, but everything that He does. And we need to keep that in mind. So I want to ask you something. I know I have some art lovers out there that, that watch and that worship with us. So I want to ask you a question. Do you know what mosaic art is? Do you know what mosaic art is? We have examples of it all around us, and sometimes we notice and sometimes we don't. Yeah, years and years and years ago, years and years ago, probably 30 years ago, uh, I was taking my daughter to Warren and my mother to Disney World, and we flew out of Cincinnati Airport. And if you've ever been in the terminal there in uh, Cincinnati Airport, the, the history of Cincinnati is on these humongous mosaic works of art made with little bitty tiles but they take up the whole walls and and it, it's I don't know how many feet long maybe maybe 50 60 yards long and these giant pictures and I, I was sitting there waiting for our plane to come going oh my gosh somebody had to take those little pieces of tile figure out what order they go in and how to make those, all those, it, and it's just piles and piles of tiles that rhymes to make these incredible works of mm -hmm. art. So it's really, really, really incredible artwork 
if you've ever noticed. So we, we may or may not have some around the house here, but um, oh, Jordan Wright, she's worked with Mosaic Arts, and, but she hadn't done it since middle school. But uh, there's lots and lots of things. There's a cross up on my refrigerator that Maddie made during Bible school of little pieces of glittery foam that she stuck together on the, the template of the cross. And she built a beautiful glittery uh, cross, and I meant to bring that down with me. I knew I was forgetting something. Uh, also, uh, some of you out there I know are puzzle jigsaw puzzle people right so you have pieces of a jigsaw puzzle and sometimes there are a thousand pieces or 500 pieces and it takes time and it takes concentration and it takes effort to put those pieces together but when you're done and I've seen some Ruth and Jane and I think Tony and Vicki uh, I've seen them uh, put on Facebook they're completed jigsaw puzzles and some of them look crazy. I was watching a movie last night and there was a lady on there and she was putting a putting a jigsaw puzzle of coffee beans together and I'm going that makes me a little crazy just look at that. Anybody know what this is? Stained glass. Miss Rose a few years ago here in LaGrange went to the art gallery and she took a class on stained glass art. It's a form of mosaic art. Now if you're familiar with this, it takes these pieces of glass. Now these pieces of glass did not come preformed in this shape. Miss Rose saw the potential in these pieces of glass and uh, uh, let me see if I can get some light going through there, but you can see it is beautiful. I love this piece. And she did it all herself with, with help of the instructor. The professor helped her uh, to learn that, the artist rather. And she made a beautiful piece of art out of, let's face it, broken glass. Not only was it broken, it had to be broken a little bit more and formed and shaped into those shapes before she could make that fleur de lis that she made. So there's lots of times that we can take something that's broken, not only repair it, but make it into something even more beautiful than before. I want you to look at this. It's a beautiful mosaic work of art of Jesus' ascension. Now, I looked at hundreds of mosaic works of art of Jesus, and that one, the colors and the shapes, and you can see thousands of pieces of tile that it took to make that beautiful piece of artwork, and there you can see details in his face and his clothes. It's amazing to me. It's amazing, amazing to me that people can take piles of glass and stone and tile and things like that and make these beautiful works of art. So it is, it's the kind of artwork that the artist takes a bunch of little pieces of hard things, sometimes even broken things, and puts them together in a, in a form to make a picture or a pattern. I have another example here. Campbell Adair, do you remember doing this? I know it's backwards because it's a, it's a flipped image, I'm sorry, but it says Pastor Jeff Rocks. And you can see the rocks is made out of stones that Miss Kathy and Campbell made. It's mosaic art. It's taking something and forming a pattern to make something beautiful. So I just love that piece and it's here in my studio uh, at my house here. So, uh, the, the, the thing I want to get to is sometimes the broken things that people might want to discard or get rid of, God can take and make into incredibly beautiful things. So, whether it's stone or glass or tile or whatever media they use, I want you to understand that God does the same thing with us. 
That's right. We struggle and, and we get broken all the time. We get broken through heartaches and disappointments, failures, falls and hurts, losses and brokenness, pain. Sometimes we find ourselves repeating these same mistakes over and over and over again and we keep breaking perfectly good parts of ourselves. And sometimes we do it over and over again. You'd think we would learn to not do these things over and over, but we're stubborn. We are stubborn people. So brokenness is something that God promises will happen, will happen over the course of our lifetime. We will be broken. Uh, perfectly good parts of us will be broken, but God also promises that he will take our brokenness and make something beautiful out of it. That he'll take our ashes and he'll make us a beautiful crown, something beautiful. In Isaiah 61, God tells us that he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyful blessing for mourning, and festive praise instead of despair. So see, God is in the business of taking the things that are broken in us and fixing them. Not only does he fix them, he makes them into something even more beautiful. When your car breaks down, typically you take it to the repair station and they repair it. And when you look at it, you can't really tell any difference. They just repair it. That will make it look better. But that's the beauty of the way God works. When a jagged, broken piece of us is lying there, God picks it up. He forms it with his own hands and his spirit. And when he puts it back, he makes it something even more special, beautiful, magical than it was before. In God's plan for us, he includes our breakdowns. Why? Why does he include breakdowns in our his plans for us? Well, it's in order for him to take our broken pieces and create something more and more complex and beautiful from it. And we need to understand that as we go through trials, as we go through troubles, as we go through things in our lives, a lot of times the, when he repairs us, when he makes us into his mosaic, we turn out even more beautiful than we started. And a lot of times that beauty comes through in our gratitude, in our joy, in our praise. And we become even more and more beautiful creatures as we give God the praise for the broken pieces that he fixes in us. In Psalm 52, 17, we're told the sacrifice of God is a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. We've all had broken spirits. We've all had a broken and contrite heart. And God doesn't hate us for what we've done. So in other words, when we look to him, when we've been crushed, when we've been broken, when we plead to him for help and we look to him when bad things have happened to us, he will take those broken pieces and add them to the mosaic that he and he alone can create. We're being remade. Listen to this. We are being remade by the hands of God into something very rare and very special. When you sit back and look at your life right now, what do you see? Some of us may see a mess, a shambles, a wreck, rubble piled in a corner. If you look at a pile of stones lying in your yard or, or broken glass or old tiles lying in the corner of your garage, you may see a mess. But an artist may see potential. 
potential for something amazing. That's how God sees you. God sees you potential for beauty. Selfishness, greed, addictions, hatred, jealousy, loneliness, divorce, pain, these it can all break us. It can all break pieces off of us and try to destroy us. But let me tell you something about human beings. God created humans. We're not designed to be destroyed. We're not designed to be destroyed. We're designed to be repaired when we break. God gave us an opportunity and continues to give us opportunities that when we're broken, He is willing, ready, and able to fix everything within us if we'll let him if we'll allow the artist to do his work the Bible is full of imagery of God restoring us rebuilding us, fixing us and making us into something new something better something more beautiful Romans 12 2 says do not be compat <laughs> Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's about constantly being reformed into something better by the hands of God. The pattern of this world, what this world tries to do is to keep you from being formed into a beautiful mosaic. The world tries to keep you from being created in anything better what it tries to do is take your broken pieces and it makes it look like rubble. The world breaks you down and then keeps you broken and undesirable. If we let it, the world and its ways will having us look in the mirror and seeing something ugly and useless and abandoned and needing to be discarded. So don't believe the world. The world wants you to stay broken and even break you up even more. But not God. Not Jesus. That's not what He wants for you. He wants to take your broken pieces and recreate you into art something beautiful you were already beautiful but he can make you into something more beautiful so I know there's a lot of hurting people out there I'm trusting that there's some people out there watching listening to me as you watch this who are moved God has stirred your broken heart so today Maybe even right now, while I finish up, maybe, just maybe, let God take your broken pieces and create something extraordinary. He's the ultimate artist, the ultimate creator, the only one who knows how to take your ashes and turn them into a beautiful crown. We have to be willing to turn our brokenness over to him. You know, when I'm walking in the backyard or in the woods and I see a stick lying on the ground, I may just walk over it or step on it and not think a thing about it. I might pick it up and wave it around for a minute, poke stuff with it. But, you know, someone else can go through and pick up a stick and they see potential. And they take that and they make it into something beautiful and special. It was just a stick on the ground. But the artist saw so much more. So, with that being said, be okay with your brokenness. But don't stay that way. 
allow God, the ultimate mosaic artist, to take your broken pieces. Take the potential that he sees in them and put them together and make something incredible out of you. And he'll use you in amazing ways. So I want you to close your eyes and I want you to ask God to take the loose, broken parts of you and form something new and stunning. Close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we are broken people. But fortunately for us, you fix broken things. And then you use them. So, Father God, wherever that brokenness is within us, our broken mind, our broken heart, our broken bodies, our broken spirits, well, Father God, take the pieces. And, Lord, we just surrender to you so that you rebuild us into something beautiful. Lord Jesus, we're broken. We need to be saved. We need to be fixed. And only you can do it. Only your hands can do it. So, Father God, we lift up, lift up our broken pieces to you today, Father God. Lord Jesus, continue the work. Some of us, you've been putting back together for years. Lord Jesus, let us not give up allowing you to continue to form us into something more beautiful as long as we're alive, as long as we're on this this planet. And then, Father God, the work in us, your artistic touch won't be done until we step foot in heaven. And thank you for that, Lord. We praise you and we thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. So during this season of Lent, the next six weeks leading up to Easter, we're going to focus on the things that God can refine in us as we prepare for another Holy Week and another Resurrection Day. Where do we have walls that we have built up between ourselves and God? Where do we still have defenses in place that we're not letting God all the way in? That's what I want us to look at over the next several weeks as we move towards Easter. We need to, all of us need to consider where are we defensive keeping God out and where are we too comfortable? If we crack open our Bibles ever so often, once a month, once a quarter, once a year on January 2nd or 3rd and we're ready to go, where are we hiding things from God that he can use to rebuild us? Where he can remake us? Where we can allow him to make us his mosaic, his piece of art. God bless you all. I'll see everybody again on Wednesday night, six o'clock with uh, Wednesday night with Pastor Jeff. Please don't end this day without considering where can God work in your life? What can you give to him more deeply, more completely for him to form you into an even more beautiful work of art? God bless you all. Thank you so much for watching and worshiping with us. And I can't wait to see you again. God bless and I'll see you real, real